Hey everybody, Al Puglisi, Al Puglisi Trains, and I'm very happy to have Al Judy with me. He is a famous ON30, ON30 modeler, yep. and we will explain what ON30 is for those of you that don't know, and we're going to do a segment of Day in the Shop with Al, and we're going to do what we're doing now, a tour of his layout. We'll do a walkthrough first. I'll let Al talk about the layout, and then we'll sit down and I'll ask Al some more questions about the layout. I am so excited here, folks, that when I walked in this layout room, Al had to pick me up off the floor. He keeps uh, <laughs> what, uh, uh, smelling salt, yeah, you know, so, salt. so that people pass out, they can be woken up. So let me shut my mouth and let's go inside. Folks, this wall of incredible locomotives, we are going to do on another video, so don't miss it and stay tuned. This is the first thing you see when you walk in to the layout room and I'm just going to do a quick a slow walkthrough of it and then we're we're go through with with Al and we will talk about the different scenes and it's ON30 we'll talk about the different scenes and let Al talk more about the layout it's absolutely beautiful and I'm just going to pan around and then we'll come back and slow down and examine each scene in greater detail. It's a single level layout. It's modest size. It's not a gigantic layout. It doesn't need to be. It's The details are so exquisite. And this model here, we will talk about this that just happens to be off the layout because there's no room for it. And I just want to give the viewers just a quick tour of the layout and then we're going to walk around with Al. And talk about each scene. because each scene is so breathtaking. A fast walkthrough doesn't do justice. We will pan around and we will finish in the corner here and then I'm going to turn it over to Al and we're going to examine and just walk through each scene so that I don't get any negative comments hey you walked through too quick uh, believe me we're going to examine this one okay Al when did you start this layout uh, I built this three years ago Okay. And the first 25 feet here we did last month, uh, I'm in the process of uh, rebuilding it after okay. three years. I get tired of looking at it. Oh. So um, I'm going to redo it to a more rural, get rid of some of the uh, brick buildings and things like that and make it more uh, uh, like a logging line, Okay. just a more rural type of layout. Okay. So this is where we started. Uh, yes. Let me tell you a little bit about the layout first. Okay. It's 70 feet long. Okay. okay. It's a bookshelf layout. DC. Oh, it's uh, DC. DC. Okay. Yeah, all toggle switches. Um, just, it worked for me 40 years ago and still works well today. Any sound or PFM sound? Oh, uh, uh, the, yeah, DC, DCC sound works on DC. So okay. we'll show you that. Okay, good, good. So anyhow, this is... Uh, 70 feet long. It okay. ranges in width from 16 inches to 36 inches. Mm -hmm. um, and when the rebuild is complete, it's going to have a bridge going from here to here. So I'll have continuous running instead of just back and forth on a bookshelf. Okay. So, so this is the logging camp. All right. Let me just go. see, folks. I've walked through this so quickly that 
and the logging camp. Now, most of these scratch built or kit? Or... Uh, it's a mixture. There's some of each to get a different look. Mm -hmm. The camp cars back there are just Bachmans that were redone and weathered. It's just their plastic cars. Oh, um, go back here. Yeah. The locomotive there is a unique. It's a 2462. Uh huh. It was a. Um, it was started by uh, Alan Carroll, who passed away two years ago, oh, and uh, I found it on his workbench, oh, uh, and so I finished it for him. So I hope he's. My uh, God. I hope he's looking down and smiling that uh, it, it's on the layout. This is really now these log cars. Tell me about these logs. Okay, the logs are just cast resin or plaster. Uh, logs from rusty stumps. Uh -huh. They discontinued them. They don't make them anymore. And uh, I just painted them. So they come out very well. They uh, they're a real good representation. You re no scale. You really are a master of folks in person. I mean, these look real. I mean, the the color. You're a master of color. And you were telling me you use a lot of pigments and uh, linseed oil and stuff. Right. Yeah, I use the, the pigments that uh, artists use for, um, that they mix with linseed oil to paint. Uh -huh. I use those pigments and uh, either dry brush them or mix them with alcohol mm -hmm. to do my weathering. So do you do little pastels, any pan pastel at no, all? No, no? no. Wow. No, use all my own, my own pigments. Pigments that I, I blend. They only come in a couple of colors. And I mix them. I have 16 different colors that I use that I've come up with formulas for over the uh, over the years. Now, this water tank back here was this a scratch build or? Uh, you know, I picked that up at a show, uh -huh. and it was so nicely done. I'm not sure if it was a kit. I, it looks like it would have been a kit. Uh huh. Uh, but yes, I thought it would um, fit in nice there as a water supply for the for the uh, dining hall. At the oh camp wow. Here. Okay. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yep. And this would be their little, in front here is their little station and a little freight house for the camp. Uh-huh. Wow. And here, folks, we have a nice little pond scene or what's left of... Yeah, just a swampy area. A little swampy area. And we've got uh, Mrs. Uh, So-and-so. I know Harry Clark... Uh, Al, Al was telling me he also knew Harry Clark very well. And Harry used to tell all these little stories. This is Maggie Pie, and right. she's mad because the guys are, they won't come in to eat lunch. You know, he'd tell all these great right. stories, right. you know. So, Harry, if you're looking down on us, uh, we miss you, man. No, this engine house back here. Let me, oh God, look at these little shacks back here. Just a beautiful. Yeah, that's uh, house coal. They unload there in that little shed for the uh, uh -huh. camp buildings. And uh, everybody said, well, won't they burn wood? Well, coal heats a lot better. So. Right. Wow. And this little engine house back here. Now, is this a, a, a scratch build or what? Uh, it's a, no, it's a kit. Uh, I believe that's a Kitwood Hills kit from uh, England. Mm -hmm. Oh, from England. Mm -hmm. And I just um, did some weathering and stuff on it. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Looks like the shingles are real wood. Mm -hmm. And we got a little outhouse back there. And uh, you gotta go, you gotta go, right? gotta go, you gotta go. And I'm just panning off now. Your trees are mixed. Tell us about your trees. Uh, yeah, there I like to use a variety. Uh, the fill, the fill trees, the bottle brush trees all came from um, Bill's Bargain Trees, really in uh, Lewistown, Pennsylvania. Okay, uh, and then the other ones are just ones I've uh, built or picked up. Uh, my favorite, of course, are these little deciduous trees in front here. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Weinshanker makes those hmm. in western Pennsylvania. Uh, just beautiful little trees. These stumps that are rotten stumps, are these real stumps you find in the wild and they're, bring back? They are. They're made by uh, uh, the tree guy from Canada. Makes okay. those. He comes down to the Harrisburg show. And I always get a pile of them every year. I oh, love the little mushrooms on them and the moss growing up the side of yeah. them. Yeah. But yeah, they're all made from actual real wood. Man, exquisite. Here we have a scene that, again, the walkthrough, I, as promised, and we're taking our time here. Most of these are artista figures, most of mm -hmm. these. Yes. They're, they're absolutely yep. beautiful. Yeah, and, just uh, weather them up a little bit, a little bit of a wash on them or something to tone them down a little bit and they right. look just fine like that nothing better than a weathered a finely weathered woman or man 
This little engine here is a nice little guy. He's a little round roof porter. Scratch built or kit bash? Uh, a kit, yep. Wow. Yep. And we'll talk about more of that in a little while. Most of your engines are modified kit bash right, or changed right. in I some way. I really have nothing stock, right? Wow. This little Derek car is really incredible. Was this from, a, a Wiseman? Wiseman models. Sure, I bought from him. Mm -hmm. So was this a kit of yes, his, yeah. and you built it? Yes. Was it, a, I guess, a wood kit? Yes. Oh, it's wood kit with uh, met all metal fixtures. So wow. All. Uh, and this one here with the broken glass in it. Uh, that one I, I picked up it. at a show. I'm not sure. Uh, it's resin, so I'm sure it was a kit. Wow. The snow plow, I kit bashed myself back there. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Uh, put it on a box car. It's, uh, it's oh, from okay. a, um, an AHM HO gondola plow. Really? And I just retrofitted it oh, onto cool. a new N30 box car. Oh, well, that really looks good. Well, let's keep panning around. Now, we're going to go to uh, this spectacular stone arch bridge here, and let's get you to talk about it. Right, so this was, these are made, this is an HO bridge, mm -hmm. and we didn't, for those of you that are not familiar with ON30, ON30 is 30 inch O scale narrow gauge that runs on HO gauge track. Okay. Uh, you can use HO track or Pico micro engineering, several others make ON30 track, the only difference is the ties are spaced further. Okay. Um, so on the trestle here, uh, he had a bunch of these that were blems uh he couldn't sell them uh -huh. so i bought the whole box from him reworked them so that i could butt them together so uh -huh. they were just supposed to be little nine inch bridges uh -huh. cut one and a half to make the end and these are a aim uh, aim uh abutments okay and uh widened the deck since you can't see the back i just put an overhang on it okay to give the illusion give, of a wider right wider to make deck. it wider for the on 30 right and then so it's 45 inches long and, uh, yeah, it makes a pretty spectacular oh, piece. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. And we'll talk about, I love the color of your uh, fascia. It's like a light, uh, like a, what kind of green? Sa uh, sage green. Sage green. Mm -hmm. It really blends in well. Now, I was when I first visited the layout, I saw the stressed paint on this building, and it really... Did you do this one or uh, no? This one, uh, this I actually designed this building okay. uh, for Foggy Mountain Models. Okay, and this was their master, and I'm not sure if Mark built it himself or if he had someone build it. Mm -hmm. But they did a beautiful job on the weathering on it. And uh, once the kit was sold out, he offered me the master since I designed it. Oh wow! So um, he yeah. hangs out with Jeff Grove, mm -hmm. and yeah. I'll bet you, I'll bet you anything that guy. Uh, He's a master builder, Scott. I don't know his last name. Yeah. Kind of looks like John Allen, believe it or yeah. not, to me. He's the nicest man in the world. I'll bet you he built this. Could be. Could He's be. But a anyway, master I was happy model. to end up with it. It's a good-looking piece. And this this stone house here, is this... Little, uh, little station. That's an actually an S-scale station. Oh, this here? Mm-hmm. Really? And, uh, yeah, because... You'd never I, know. Look I, at didn't, it. I didn't want a big, oversized station. I wanted okay. something just like a whistle stop. Okay. And uh, so I went with the S scale, and there's actually several of them on the layout oh, wow. at different points. And uh, yeah, you'd never know it's S scale. You'd never know. No. no. Let's go into this Geo Scoggin Mercantile yeah, Holy. George Scoggin's Mercantile. And uh, this is a um, uh, Stony Creek Designs kit. Okay. That was professionally built by a modeler from the Midwest. And uh, built for Ash Rawls layout down in uh, Richmond, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to buy the entire layout and uh, picked out just a few. I kept uh, maybe four or five structures off of it, sold mm -hmm. the rest. But um, they were just beautifully built. These figures, uh, Artista figures, I'll tell you what. These guys look like they're just, man, everybody's chilling and everybody's talking. Yeah. It's a nice scene. Oh, yeah. And uh, the cars, uh, a lot of these, tell me about a lot of these vehicles, a lot of these uh, vehicles, the, kits. Well, some are kits, uh, some are, uh, there's not a lot available in 148 scale. So right. some are 143rd, but with the 143rd, right. they're, they're sloppy with their scale. Right. Some are way oversized, some are real right. small. I've noticed that so when I'm use, buying The them. ones that look smaller, you buy. I use right. and weather them up and... Yeah, like as we come around here. This, this, not to interrupt, this, this, um, 
tractor is absolutely was right. once again was, built by the same modeler that built the uh, mercantile. This God. is another um, Stony Creek kit, uh, Roger Malinowski's kits. Now, did uh, you paint this or did he? No, no, this is the way I got it. Yeah. And it has the knots in the wood. Mm -hmm. Folks, these are the knots in the wood. These are not nail heads. These are knots in the wood. And, and what, the, way he, the way he made those, he actually drills a hole and sticks a toothpick tip and snaps it off. Uh huh. That's to, to, to simulate the, 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 the knot. knot. <laughs> Good yeah. God, lift the roof off, Al, that you did earlier, and let's show the, the exquisite uh, yeah. the craftsmanship. Just, just, just look at the. It's it's the, the rafters in it. Oh my lord! It's it is. This is exquisite, folks. Let me. These take forever to paint these uh, tool racks. Absolutely exquisite. So yeah, you they, bought you acquired this built. I did. I got this one built. Yeah. This is this is. And all I did was add a little bit to the scenes to blend it in with my scenery. Man, so it's yeah, beautiful. All right, let's keep going. Oh, uh, so, this is one of my favorite buildings here. This uh, we, we, we ask about vehicles. Yes. This is one of those ones that you buy at the dollar store that when you pull it backwards and let go, it runs. Yeah, I ran into some of those. They're like a, they're like a dollar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's what they look like when you actually do them up. <laughs> okay. So this, uh, what is it? Shrinelbly Sawmill Saw, Supply? Yeah, Sawmill Supply, yep. Yeah. Kit or? Uh, yes, this was a kit. Um, couldn't tell you who made it. It came off of the same layout as the, the two, uh, um, from Roger there, the two, uh, Stony Creeks. Beautiful distressed but, wood. Uh, now, did you, did you, uh, paint this with your pigments? This one? I touched the weathering up a little bit. Okay. On it. Yeah, not okay. much. And let's keep going back okay. here. And we've got, uh, a scene here, foundation. It looks like a foundry here. Yes, foundry and a machine shop. Wow. Yeah. Now, these kits, kit bashed? Or? These are, once again, both of these are from a series that uh, Stony Creek put out. These wow. were built by the owner of the layout, Ash Rawls. Okay. Um, nicely done. Very they did a good nice. job. I did a little touch up on them on the weathering in that. And uh, I like to get some continuity into it so mm -hmm. they look like they belong. Right. So by touching the weathering up and that, it looks like they sat beside each other for years instead oh, of two yeah. separate buildings. This is, uh, yeah, this is absolutely beautiful scene. I've got a nice wrecked locomotive sitting here. And we, this little diesel, this little guy here, what an exquisite little fellow here. This is a kit bash. Yes, it's, uh, I call this one Brutus. It's uh, done with a uh, Backwoods Miniatures kit wow. on a Bachman uh, Davenport. Good yep. Lord. And it runs, uh, well, we'll run some stuff, I yep. guess. And, yep. and here is some, I'm going to pan up so we can see, since I'm tall, just exquisite. Let me back and take in the whole scene. And then let's continue. And we talked about this engine house. Right. This is a one-of-a-kind from regs to riches. Mm -hmm. uh, they made this stone engine house at a two-stall, but uh, Ash didn't have room for it, and he knew the owner, so he talked him into making a one-stall version for him. And as far as I know, according to, according to the owner, this was the only one they ever built, and they actually built it for him. Wow. So, um, yeah, definitely a one-of-a-kind kit. And this little engine here with the uh, tarps on it, yep. uh, that's, tell us about that. That's a really interesting so piece. So that was a, a Bachman Heisler that just gave up on me. And um, they're just really not worth to you buy the parts to fix them. You're further ahead to just trash Tra them. Right, right. So I make them into derelicts and sell them for deadlines. Wow. The, uh, the tarp is made with uh, single-ply facial tissue. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Wow. Covered the stack so the rain doesn't go in it. And this crane is a, a backwoods miniatures. Backwoods of a kit, I yes, guess. Yes, kit, brass beautiful, kit. Yep. Beautiful, yep. beautifully painted. Let's keep going here. And, uh, and what struck me, ah, there's an interesting uh, piece of uh, rolling stock. What is this? Okay, so this was this is a brass auxiliary tender from Overland. Okay. Wow. They offered an ON3 Shea with two different tenders. 
Mm -hmm. And so this tender didn't have a home, so I put her on that scratch built flat car and made it, in, made it into a crazy looking water car. That is so cool. <laughs> and you know, folks, another thing I came when I saw the, I thought these were all wood kit bashed uh, log cars. You say these are Bachman They're just Owen Bachman 30. Bachman Owen 30 that were painted and weathered. Yeah. Painted and weathered. Yep. Including the flat cars? The flat cars are San Juans. Okay. But they're kits, too. They're kits. Yeah. But the uh, log cars were ready to run. You just painted them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Man, the detail. The bolt that came with the carriage bolts, all those bolt oh, yeah, details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything. That's all molded in. You just have to take your time to... They're, they're time-consuming to paint. Right. And this scene back here is really beautiful. Let me hone in here. Sorry, let me. That's all right. That water tank back there, and there's oh, there's a building way back there, and I promise Al won't mess anything up. Yeah. I won't drop the phone. It's, it's an old dilapidated coaling shed in the corner. Yo, there. I love it, and Falling it's got. Some, yeah. I love it. It's got some flowers growing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they don't use the uh, coaling shed or the uh, oil tank anymore, so they're just dilapidated, just still sitting there along the right of way. Got wildflowers back there. Look at that. This is, let me zoom out again. Yeah, this is exquisite. And more of the logs that uh, you say, who makes these logs? Rusty Stumps made them. Rusty Stumps. Are they still in business? No, they're still in business, but they don't make the logs anymore. I'm guessing the dye went bad. Uh-huh. So. Wow. Now, what do you use for water? Do you use Envirotex or do you use other things? Um, this is um, Woodland well, Scenics. Oh, wood. really? Okay. Tell us about this. You were telling me earlier about this bridge scene. So, this, dam. so this was this was a scratch built floodgate for a, a dam on a logging pond on a layout I bought, mm -hmm. and the guy had poured two inches of resin up against it. Okay. So there was no way to get it out. So I salvaged what I could of it, mm -hmm. and I thought I've got to be able to come up with a way to use it. So I put it here as a dilapidated logging pond. I wrote a magazine article about it called the day of the dynamite oh, and cool. uh the story was that the uh, oh there it is right here yep the and, uh the during a spring flood in order to save the mill from washing away uh -huh. they dynamited the dam and this is what's left of it to so, save the mill they dynamited the dam right yeah now are you an editor or contributor to this on 30 magazine uh yeah i've written Oh, quite a few articles for them over the years, yes. Wow. It's, a, it's an annual, comes out once a year. Oh, does it? And, uh, okay. I've written uh, four or five articles for them over the years. Um, I usually don't submit articles. Mm -hmm. I let them ask me for something, if okay. they're looking for something in particular, and I'll write it for them. Wow. Um, so going back to, we had to dynamite this dam in order to save this sawmill <clears throat> right. sitting over here and here's the sawmill and i'm going to pan over to it let's look through this beautiful tree and let's just i want to <clears throat> pan in on uh these outhouses are exquisite are these uh little scratch built outhouses yeah, or little, little shop buildings, board yeah. by board uh they're really nice and just the right amount of lumber and this is a sierra west uh Sawmill, yeah. Sawmill, yep. With and a complete interior. Andre Konezny, he's uh, of Andre runs on the channel. Just I believe purchased the HO version of this. Yeah. And this is the O scale version. Yes. And it is absolutely Andre. If you were here, I'd have to peel you up off the floor. It's really exquisite. The and you're going to light this. It is lit. I just don't have it hooked up right That's now. That's okay. Because when I put built this, I had to move the transformer. Uh -huh. And since I'm going to be rebuilding the entire layout and moving everything, I didn't go to the trouble of hooking it back up. Yeah, that's beautiful. And uh... now this is the lumber dock was added. Mm -hmm. That's scratch built to. Uh, it just gives it a much larger footprint. Mm -hmm. uh, right now it's about uh, 42 inches long, 16 mm -hmm. inches deep. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the large mill building in the back is uh, scratch built, poured plaster walls from uh, a kit that was cut down, and uh, mm -hmm. Let me just... it's beautifully uh, colored. I love the color of the brick, the green, and the the red With peeking the red through. showing through from it yeah. fading over the years. Yeah, I really like the color. One of the my favorite things about this layout is you have many colors. It's yeah. a lot of people make the mistake of 
falling into the trap of four or five colors. Yeah. And this has got countless color, like in real life, right. because and, you, you, and, that's the way it is. And I do a ton of scratch building, and people say, why do you buy buildings from other layouts? And I do that just to get the variety of looks and uh, finishes and things like that, like you would have in real life. Right. The only thing I do is touch up the weathering so they look like they were all in the same physical location for years. Right. Um, and, you know, folks, like you were saying earlier, Al, and I feel this way now. I was stubborn. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I only want stuff I built. And that's so oh, yeah, stupid yeah, because yeah. because other people's work is different. Right, and, right. And no matter how different I try to be, and, it always looks like something I built. Right. You know, we have our own styles. Right, right. And yeah, by, they would all look exactly alike. And by having other people's, uh, some other buildings on the layout, it's it, it creates a lot of interest. This this is a really interesting scene here. Was this a... That's a, that's a Mount Albert kit. Oh, really? Mount Albert Lumber Company, yeah. It was the, a... A kit, the car. The, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it came with the castings. Mm -hmm. Yep. Damn. This is interesting back here. This uh, deep, this little uh, shed with the uh, old wood car attached to yep. it. That's a uh, Foggy Mountain Models kit, mm -hmm. and I just modified it a little bit and added docks on it, front and back. The um, that's my oils building where they keep all their different oils and greases. Mm -hmm. Here's a crew back here. These dudes yeah. are busy working. Yeah, that's the carpenter shop. Got a building way in the back here. That's really a neat building. What is this big building back here? That's so, all, all scratch built. Wow. Uh, it's built from a uh, warehouse. It's, I used a warehouser photograph of one of their big mill buildings. Mm -hmm. And I actually built it. The windows that were open in the photographs are open <laughs> on the model. Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, yeah. Wow. Man, look at that. I love the weathering. We talked earlier about the use of pigments and that you really don't use pastels, you more pigment type. Right, right. And this water tank here is a perfect example of a dance of many different colors. Right. That uh, Different layers of rust and grease and whatever. And Scratch built, individual board, little engine house here. This little dock cider, is this another uh, kit bash that is, here? That is a kit bash. Look at the that size of the... by Dave Ross, and uh -huh. it was brush painted. Really? I loved the way he did it with the lowered cab and everything, uh -huh. and I just brought it home, took it apart, and repainted Man. it, and then put it back together. And then we have a, an interesting ash pit here, and then we've got an ash pit over here with some water in it. Yeah, abandoned ash pit. With a cinder block, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. that outhouse. And let's take a look at some of the models that were down lower that I want to show folks. Let me go ahead and pause this. All right, Al, I, I accidentally looked down, and Al was like, oh, I see your face. And, and, <laughs> and I found this diorama. And, Al, you built this for the upcoming this is contest. This is going to be for the National Narragage Convention in Pittsburgh in September. Okay. And uh, I call this what we lost in the fire we found in the ashes. Uh, scratch built burned out engine house actually much more difficult to build than building one that's complete right <laughs> oh man and uh, the precision scale shea that's about a thousand dollar brass shea there oh my but God. somebody had put it in stripper on a complete uh -huh. and it just ate all the ins insulators out of it so it's a wow. dead short no matter what you do with it but it's and but the stripper made it look like it was burnt Wow. And I thought, okay, I know what I'm going to do with that. So that was actually the inspiration for the diorama was that uh, precision scale shea that looked like it was in a fire. I was going to ask if we, yeah, what the uh, inspiration was, whether it was maybe John Allen used to do stuff like this. This. Yeah, but the back's finished on mine. God, <laughs> look at John would have right, finished John, the back. Right, he'd have a mirror. <laughs> this. It's hard to do this, folks. I've tried this a couple times, lighting buildings on fire, and it didn't go well. There's a guy nailing up a sign that says, keep out. Wow. Did yeah. you burn a little bit of this with a, a, a cigarette lighter or secret? A, a, a torch. A torch. Yeah, yeah I, I did just burned a bunch of lumber ahead of time <laughs> and then made it fit as I needed it. God. Can we show the other side or sure. no? Let All me right. turn him around here. All right. Yeah, <sighs> the other side, the fire was so hot it burnt the fence down. And the base is exquisite. A nice little base. Yep. 
This should go on the. You can't put this on the layout, huh? It's so beautiful. Well, I was going to. You can. It. I can. It. It's just sitting in that base with uh, silicone, so it can be lifted right out. Mm -hmm. I just haven't found room for it yet because it needs to be someplace where you can see both sides of it. Right. Man. So it needs to be on like a peninsula or something. Maybe someday I'll have a place for it. I love it. And then this little guy over yeah. here. This what, is, this is a this is a Tom York kit. And this is actually a produce warehouse in Florida is the prototype for it, but I turned it into a mill building, mm -hmm. added some stacks and a dust collector, and so I made it into something uh, that would fit. I don't really have produce on my leg. Right, right. So at some point, I'll use it as a mill building. Well, let's pause this and go look at the one behind me. Folks, I just knelt down and Al started laughing because, you know, people ooh and ah about this caboose, and I, I was like, holy shit, I didn't even see it. This tells about it. This okay, is well, super you cool. And I, you and I met at Stroudsburg a couple of weeks ago, and I bought that off a table and that oh. was junked. And uh, so oh. that's what I ended up doing with it. I made it into a, an office. Wow. Look at that. A man. rail yard office. The color. So. The use of color. I love the dance of color in this. That's just the way I am. That's my taste. Now, this Derek Carver, was this a, a, a scratch yeah, build? No, or? those are all kits. Yeah. Okay. Yep, those are kits. And this uh, three stall. Okay. This was a. This is a customized um, Deerfield Laser. Mm -hmm. Makes a much larger engine house uh, that's way too big for ON30. So I asked them to make a, a cut down version. And so they cut and just made the framework for it. Okay. And then I scratch built. It's all individual, eight different colors, stained boards. Mm -hmm. uh, the look at the corrugated, windows. The corrugated tin. Mm -hmm. If you look, there's even screen over. Yeah. On the back ones, there's screen oh, over the windows so to keep the pigeons out. That's incredible. Um, th this is paper corrugated tin. Okay. Um, Doesn't look like it. No. Looks real. No. It's and just... this giant building over here, you did. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the hopper tipple. I used O scale two rail hopper. So, so there's uh, eight of them. Right. And uh, used those as the bunkers. And there's actually a prototype built like this on the East Broad Top, mm -hmm. except it's open. And um, of course, when you get snowstorms and ice storms and stuff like that, the cold didn't flow out of them very well. So I thought, well, I'll build a cover over my version of it. And you're selling this? Uh, yes. Yep. This, uh, folks, if you're interested in this, it's not cheap, but if you're interested, you can email me and uh, I'll put you in touch with Al. It's not cheap, but it is spectacular. And it's about 24 by 30, 36 inches. Something like that, right? Yep. And it's uh, 0 and 30 track here and underneath. Um, and I left the edges stick out so you could actually put it into a layout if you wanted to. Right. Now, folks, if you have a two rail O scale layout, you could. You could theoretically add a little ON30 line. Right, just to service the hoppers. Just to service this thing, right. and it could disappear somewhere through a tunnel. Yep. Because this is an O-scale building, Yes. but it's the, the, what we're talking about is the track itself is, is O-scale, 30-inch wide track. Right. So it would be, Al could completely set you up. This, yep. and the little, this is stunning. The little tar paper, the little red tar paper building is scratch built. Absolutely beautiful. Well, let me pause this real quick and show you something else. This was underneath the layout, folks. Al said, wait, you forgot something. I said, <laughs> I looked yeah, down. This is a, a, a 30, 30 inch by seven foot long diorama. It's a static model. Mm -hmm. I had two, I had scratch built two very large buildings for just displays at shows and that. And they, were, they turned out so nicely that I thought I would really like to use them. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is Albert's Distillery. Oh, that's my name, Albert. Yeah. And yeah. the other one is Tri-State Manufacturing. Uh-huh. Oh, look at that tower there, the way that, that, that that's a kit bag. That's interesting. Scratch that's a, a, brass, a brass tank. Is it? Mm-hmm. And then I made the base for it and weathered it. Wow. Trying to get away, folks. And this thing's about, oh, maybe what, 22 feet by five feet? It's 30 inches deep okay. and 7 feet long. And 7 feet long. Right. The little engine house is the master from um, a Tom York kit. It's the original master, and I left it just like I got it because it came from Tom. Right. 
The little, the little five-inch turntable is from Kitwood Hills in England. Oh, wow. It's a little critter turntable. You and this will run. Me. This will run on DC but power. It would if I hooked, yeah, if I don't hooked have, it. Yeah, I don't have anything wired up to right. it. But um, you could either do that or it's on uh, foam. It could be set right into a layout and then just added to. Well, for the right amount of money, this uh, you would uh, sell this diorama out. You know, yeah. and that's... You know, every, everything's for sale. Right. <laughs> if the price is right. It's not... Again, folks, you know, watching my channel, that I don't... Uh, we don't sell inexpensive stuff. This is worth it. And if you are interested in just an absolute little... Even if you don't want to build a layout, you want a little 30 by 7 foot layout that just is a, a thing of beauty in your home. This is the ticket. You can contact me and I'll tell you more about it. Put you in touch with Al. Man, this is really nice. Look at the down here. Get in. It's a brass water column. Oh, yeah. On the, wow. And this little up and have a casting sausage. I have that same car except green on my. Yeah, I found that just like the caboose in a junk box at a train show. Uh -huh. And I turned it into a shed. Wow. <laughs> well, let's pause it and run some stuff. Well, we got one here. Pissac. How do you pronounce this? Uh, you know what? I, I don't know, but it's so <laughs> nicely done. I just left it alone. It looks like piss cat. It's something from, it's something from Maine. <laughs> wow. It is really cool. There we go. He just needed a little persuasion. Yeah, a little cuss is taken off. How's the whistle on this thing? Uh, it can't blow. Oh, it can't it's blow? DC, so it only blows when it blows the by itself. That's okay. It sounds great. It does have good sound for DC. Yeah. Now, did you put the sound system in it? or? Nope. This is the way I got it. And it was, like I said, it was so nicely done, beautifully weathered, great sound system. I just left it alone. Left it alone, yep. Yeah. Folks, leave it alone if it if you like it, leave it alone. I have, I have plenty that I built myself, so right. this thing really has good sound. It does. Well, I mean, you, I want I make sure everything works. Right. But I'm more about the artistic part of it than the operations part of it. So am I. I mean, everything works. Right. It all runs. All right. the switches are wired. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm. I'm more about the art of model railroading than right. the operations part of it. And just running beautiful trains through beautiful scenes. Yep. Well, Al, I really appreciate you taking time. And, folks, we're going to post A Day in the Shop with Al. And we're going to post Let's Talk About Brass with Al. So please stay tuned to see more Al Judy. Al, thanks so much. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for coming. Glad you enjoyed it.